folks, and welcome to their Sunday morning Samo Flange. I'm Matt. I'm Benjamin. Yeah. And today we're going to talk about video game music that is so good, it just makes you ball your fists up and clench your teeth. And It's funny because when you and Mikey mentioned this, after episode 200, we sat down, we mentioned a ton of top fives we could do for the future. Yes. And uh, this was one of them, and I never, it never occurred to me video game music but this How was did we start talking about it do you remember well someone when we were thinking about ideas i think mikey uh, yeah. may have mentioned it did he but okay. the thing or you but the thing was i never thought about this and then as we started listening to video game music that day i was like you oh, sat down goodness. and started pulling some of them up on your phone as mikey yeah. and i were talking and then you just randomly started playing it without prompting us and, and you were guessing a was lot it of me them. or mikey that got the first one just you got, within a no, second and a half you got them quick <clears throat> Oh, Mikey we started talking about the Mega too. Man soundtrack or something. Yeah. So there's... <coughs> there, and, and then you, you guys got me thinking, well, there's a lot of great music out there. It really is. And and some music just... It, it's just... I don't know. I just found this such an interesting topic. And I'll be honest, this is the hardest one I've ever made. There is a <gasps> The million, hardest top five you've ever done. One of the hardest ones, because right. there's a million ones that... So, I, top five hardest semiflanges. This is... <laughs> well, the hardest <laughs> one is your pick, topic. yeah, because... There's the your is, new topic. The thing is... If someone was to suggest something else, I'd say, yeah, that one was good too. Like I, I I'm sure. thinking about what are the ones that I loved as a kid that I still listen to the game. Woo! They're not the most epic ones, oh. but they just make me happy when yes. I hear that music. And there's a ton of a those ton. type of of that type of music. So I could. This is the thing that tomorrow I could give you five more different ones completely different ones and be happy with that list too you feel like you I'm could saying. put together don't you how big is your board game review list uh, uh every year i mean well i do i well now i review all through them i used to do just top 100s then i do the that's what it was you outside did, you, the 100 you did top 100 top 200 before. top 300 i just remember you, know. you doing the top 100 at, yeah. at one point yeah so do you feel like you could come up with a top 100 video game music list Oh, that'd be rough. You think that'd be so? really rough. If you're yeah. stretching it? Or? I, no, 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 no. I mean, be rough grading them. Because oh. all of them mean something. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. You know, so I, like I said, I could come up with a new top five without using any of these and be happy with it too, I bet. See, that's interesting to me because I never have equated you to be much of a video game player. And I feel like... That not today. It, that's about to, Not today, no. In the past, yes. But and and I'll be honest, there's nothing new on this way. But we've never really discussed... Uh, how we've never discussed how many games you played shoot in your youth and what you played like i got a few insights the other week after like like we said after episode 200 uh when we were talking about when you started playing some of them and things i had never heard of before so i'm curious to see if some of those that you brought up are now on your list that you are actually changing at this very moment it looks like you are rearranging your top five and that's quite all right because there's a lot to pick from and i would be very interested in hearing what the commenters uh, or the people listening to this video their first uh, instinct would be because i bet a lot of people have the same dilemma that we're in where you have to oh man but what about this one oh well how do how do i rearrange that so i just want to know what listeners you made me change the, what's it the again. first thing that comes to mind i just i didn't even say anything about any no you just made me think about something i okay, thought about another okay, game I, all right i well, thought about another game i was like oh you're allowed to have an honor another automobile another it's honorable, not honorable mention. mention oh it is in the top yeah, five in, no it's probably in the top five i've been ranking okay. so um I, I don't care who goes first um i can go first if you want to um how about it my no, and I'm changing it right now. Should I now. go first because you're going to change it again? No, I'm going to go with it now. Um, I'm going to go with an unknown. Um, North versus South. It's the a Civil NES, War game? It's an NES game. I played the heck out of that I as a kid. I remember playing that. And it starts off... <laughs> yeah. It's the Confederate Battle Cry or just the, 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 it was a little, the call to it was arms? a rendition of that, yeah. Yep. And I was like, oh, man. And we would... All the music. Me and my buddy would just we tutor horns and you know, wow. zigzag like we were playing a saxophone. But all the music from it, um, when anything oh, hit, really? we had our own little. When the Indians were attacking, to go da na 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 oh, da da da, and we do the Egyptian dance for some reason. And then it was if it was the ship that came and just dropped off someone from Virginia, whoever owned Virginia got a new army. It go dun dun dun. 
dun 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 dun, and you'd, you'd move from side smokes. to side, dun 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 dun, and you'd stand up straight at the end. I mean, I just remember all, all the of, animations and all everything. The animations, and Virginia had its own music, thing, and we did our own dances to all of oh it. Oh my gosh! Um, so this was a very gr- this was a group video game experience that your brothers and you had. No, just but, me and my buddy. Me and my oh, buddy would play buddy. all. I didn't really play it much with my brothers. Was it- he was two player co op, or you can play against two, each it other. It was just two, two on two, okay. two players, one like a lot of mean? NES games were. Right. But yeah, but we we had north and south, and um, I always wasn't it won. like a tabletop RPG in a way. Maybe I don't know, yeah, but, but it would be kind of like a board I, game now. Yeah, I can't remember like moving who, pieces around. Yeah, and such. we got that for Christmas or a birthday or something. I was like, what? This isn't Mario Brothers, but, but it turned out being the most fantastic wow. and i remember when there were only two army men left their names were smith and wesson and what? when there was one person left his name was jones jones you know because he just <laughs> you know we, we, we'd scream like that but i just jones! remember all the adventures all the laughs all the wow. fun we had with that stinking game but the music we danced along to it so it was a bad and you remember every it. bit of it no, that, that that's what's great. That that No, I'm thinking of another one now. I'm glad that you have framed this top 5 list in that way earlier that you did and now because that is obscure and I do remember that game and I don't think that anyone most people's top 100s probably never include North and South. Yeah. Uh but the, that's great though that it's it's attached to that great feeling that you have i thought about another one now oh did it just get bumped uh yeah i think so what's your now number five then do you remember bust a groove no i do not no bust a move i think i mean i remember the song yeah the the, yeah um well i don't know if it was that song it was a different song but the theme song to that one was really cool bust a move Uh, yeah bust a move come on different no it was a different song and it was just great what is that is that a game yeah, it's a game. It was oh. a dance game, one of the early dance games, like you, a DDR style. I think you, I don't think you, you didn't. It didn't. You didn't move with. Sure. You, it wasn't a Wii, but you pressed the buttons to have them do certain dances. Was it a Wii game? No, it wasn't okay. a Wii game. It no wasn't motion. Game. It was a. I can't remember PlayStation. Maybe I can't remember. Hmm. It was one of the older games. But either that way, that was a good one. You're saying that that was one of the best. I don't know. There's just so many. But go ahead before of I. Of course. Before I kill again. Um, <laughs> so what's number five? Number five for me is just in general, uh, uh, rock band. Uh, and Guitar Hero, I guess, for that matter. Uh, but just because Rock Band makes it Which so much one? fun. I'm going to... Uh, currently, it's just Rock Band 4. Because okay. you can't... I have right. Rock Band 4, and I play it to, even to this day, because they are still creating songs for Rock Band, Harmonixes, and they, really? and they have two new songs every week that come out for the past 15 That's years. awesome! Yep. And I didn't know they still did that. Y- they do, and it's, it's a big active user base. I was playing it just a couple days ago, and it's so much fun still, and, and they've made it. The thing is that they, you know, they saturated the market, and yeah. it, it's a sad story with the music game uh, demise that happened, and it it really got a bad uh, uh, shake at the at uh, longevity and now it's just they've they've evolved from it and and rock band and harmonics they i think they self published the last one so okay. they didn't have to depend on a big studio to yeah. to force another release and another release yeah. and another release <laughs> So this last one is really fun because it has the option to be, you can be ultra competitive with it, or like most people, the de- and the default settings for the game are very just party friendly. So they know the game is just to get together with your friends, yeah. have fun, whatever, play multiplayer. If you want to just play in a band, rock out, have a good time. you feel like you're playing the music. You yeah. feel like you can play the music, right? And I'm musically inclined, but I don't have the desire to learn how to play the guitar i can play the bass guitar i can play the upright string bass and and i play bass in the rock band now like on rock band i'm in the top five percentile of bass players like i'm really really good at it but it's super easy compared to the drums and the guitar parts uh but i just love the rhythm section and i love the bass like anytime i hear a new song with anything, I, I hear the bass line first. It's the first thing that I go to. It's what I sing. It's what I enjoy. And, and so that's that's my MO. I think Rock Band 3 oh, was the last one. So, we, so Rock Band 4, I said, that's, yeah. that's the one because you can import all of the songs from Rock Band 1, 2, 3 into oh, awesome, Part man. 4. So I have them all into one. What, that's the reason for it. I think it, so we was. had three. 
And Megan was really good at it. Megan really? used to be really good. Yeah, we used to play that a lot. The last one, I mean, I wanted Megan the over. Aerosmith one. Yeah, did they the make Aerosmith a Guns N' Roses one? I don't think they had a Guns N' Roses it's... one. They had ACDC. They made, they made uh, well several the others. Metallica, I think they had Too many. one. But but uh, the Aerosmith one, I really wanted. Um, but the last one, I think we played was World Tour. Where yep. you had the band, the guitar hero good, world tour, the world drum tour. too with it. Oh yeah, and we, all of it. Our name was, um, um, oh goodness gracious, oh, we listen, are. I can't wait. What was your band the, name? Uh, <laughs> what was it? We are the. I can't remember. It was something with Care Bears. What? And I said, uh, we are the. We all the whatever the like in a British accent. Whatever they say. Yeah, we all the some some cabas one three two one cabas da. Uh, you know, three say. two one cabas da. That's what we say. Activate say, talk, like, overdrive. This I'm cabas I'm cabas some something and we all the cabas da. That's fantastic. Five five two one cabas da. We're the something care bears, and um we had a great time with it. We joked around with it. Had a great time, and that was of course you're right. They just came up with way too many, way too and many, way, way too, too much of time. They mm-hmm. over they flooded the market. It was hot, but they just did it. I mean, there was like they were coming out like all the time. They yeah, come out with a new game every six weeks. It felt like yeah, another one. Yeah. a brand new one. You're like, I can't keep up with all. And this. And then they and got into worry, arguments you know. with the artists, and there was all kinds yeah. of licensing issues and stuff like that. So that's why in Rock Band Four they went a different direction and they made it much more of a, a fun game. They have stopped making the peripherals, so they're difficult to find. But if you can, which you can still find them on eBay or, or mm-hmm. I found the the base I'm playing on at Walmart warehouse uh, uh, oh. for not that much more expensive than it was brand new, but it was brand new, like oh, it had okay, never good. been opened. They just kind of found it in the back and they sold it on Walmart. Oh. Warehouse or something. Oh, there you go. Yeah, so you can find them. It's just it can be difficult. It's going to be difficult. And uh, yeah, and so it's crazy fun. But uh, with what you said too, our band, uh, we had a, one of my favorite birthday parties I've ever had in my life was a surprise party that my friends threw for me like on a random Thursday, and I didn't know that they were going to do it. Yeah, clearly, surprise party. But it's the only time I've ever been surprised. I guess the only time I've had that moment where everybody jumps out and says surprise. And we had an 80s themed Rock Band 3, Rock Band 2 party, I think it was. But we had the stage kit that came included with it, too. They had all of it. Was in, it was in the prime. So we had the, the lights, the green, red, and yellow lights with a fog machine. You could fill it up with fog juice. And as the song would build, like the fog would fill up the room. And then you would hit the big overdrive, and it would like... And you had awesome. the lights going off and everything. And then our band was called Lieutenant Dan's Magic Leg Band. And we... <laughs> You got magic legs. And we had to wear 80s themed outfits and could only choose from 80s themed songs. And the beauty of it is, is I had my credit card linked to my Xbox account and still do. But people would come over and they would we would go through the rock band store, which has thousands and thousands of songs now. But even then, and if someone found a song that they really loved, and like, oh, my God, I love this song. I would just put it. There was a. a uh, like a donation bucket on the coffee table in the living room and i would say just give me two bucks and and i would buy it on my credit card and by the end of the night we had a bowl full of cash because people would put in two dollars because that's how much it was it was like a dollar 99 it still is a dollar 99 like for song ah, you can buy packs that make yeah. it a little more discounted but it's that. still the same price model and so nice. people would just literally put cash in a bucket at, at the end of the night or it didn't matter if they didn't have any yeah. like whatever it was just sort yeah, of a donation some, thing if they wanted do, but we would i would say anything's on the table and i would never choose a song because i was the host and i loved doing it i loved hosting it and seeing what people got excited for that was that's the most joyful that thing is, fun. is, is we fun. scrolling through the list and people are like oh my god and everybody's yeah. got a great memory that they attach to yeah. it and they get really excited that's about it and then as their the game right so we had the three microphones the guitar the bass the drums the, the pro symbol expansion kit the lights and wow. the keyboard at wow. the time too yeah we had all of it so we had wow. Eight people at once, I think you could play at the, at the, at the heyday. Yeah, yeah. Seven or eight. Wow. I don't remember now. Wow. But it was fantastic. And we would rotate round robin around the room and, and oh, just awesome. had the most awesome. amazing time. So I couldn't I couldn't talk yeah. about video game music without giving that no, no, the no, shout no, out that it deserves. Pick. Because and it, it has what it is now is what it should have been. Rock Band 4, the way it is now, is so much fun to really? play. So it is still out Good. there and, and exists. So pick it up and go okay. out there and play drums for my band so that I don't have to do that. There you go. Anymore, yeah. um, anyway. My, my number four, which was number five, which moved up to number four oh, now, okay. uh, which uh, everything up. has been shifting around, which could be not in the top five after the, the next day after this podcast. Uh, I bought Mario Brothers 2 with my own money. Oh. I had to work because my parents weren't going to get it for me, and I really Such wanted it. Such an underrated Mario. And I bought it, nothing like the regular Mario, no. but I was impressed with it. I enjoyed it. 
I was. So did I, you play it at a friend's house I, first? To be honest, for the longest, that to me, no, no. I just knew I wanted. You just it knew I, you wanted. I it. had Super Mario Bros. Oh, wow. needed number two. Okay. Uh, to me, for the longest, uh, the frog guy at the end was the hardest one to beat. He yeah. was harder than Bowser. Yeah. And it took me forever to finally beat him. Now, when I did, I was effing pissed. It was huh. just a dream. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but one thing that always stuck with me, and I love beating that game because the music mm. that played when he was sleeping and they're running the credits. Dun 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. It's kind of like a nice little sweet little, a, this is the end. And yeah. I found that music that I really enjoyed that music. Was that your motivation for and I'd sit, well, I sit there, it? I sit there and watch the rest of the credits, which usually you turn it off, but right. you don't care. It's the end credits, right. who cares? But I'd sit there and watch the end credits because I'd listen to that music and i go, that's kind of nice. That's magnificent. And it just makes me, and I listen, I listened to these before I did this podcast, mm. And I still like that music. So That's today cool. it's just it's really it's a nice little lullaby while you sleep in something nice. And yeah, it's fun. No, that's great. And you bring up a good point. That is really saying something that people would sit through the credits for it. Like Marvel has really done great as far as oh, well, yeah. all the people who work on those movies, they want to get their name seen. It, look, they're just behind the act, behind the actors and the superstars up there. But you worked really hard on it. I just want my name to flash up there for a second. And making it so that People don't just immediately just get up and leave is great. I've always watched the credits. I love watching credits. I love reading names yes. and I like reading the the, yeah, the titles did. that people have. Mm -hmm. Like the most absurd, like yeah. Mr. Cruz's assistant dog walker is like number two. Like what? Glad he got one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. It's got, amazing. Got the there. I I get a lot of entertainment from watching credits and reading them and and uh, trying to pronounce names that come up and and everything else. I'm fascinated by that stuff and the way movies are made. And uh, but I've sat through them, but now Marvel has changed the game so that most people have it. finally they realize that well we better wait for the whole credits because there might be another tip or, or a teaser at the end, and you know they're going to and yeah. uh, but for something because everybody else short of a Marvel movie, mm -hmm. sh almost everything else and almost everyone else that you know credits are rolling okay bye we're out you know no one's gonna sit and watch that and read that i don't know anyone else that does that on a regular basis outside of me and maybe i'm wrong if you do tell me but i i, uh, I think that's incredible that music that you loved so much was almost another part of the game for you mm -hmm. like you, there was nothing yeah. to do but listen to it yeah that's incredible that's what, what a nice high compliment me. to yeah. sit through as a kid yeah to, with i know as a kid else. especially as a kid yeah you've got another bowl of cereal to eat but it was like well hang on the music's not over <laughs> it's not over yet exactly and, and the thing is though that at that time to listen to hear that music again like it was a special thing because you have to beat the entire game it is. It's, it's almost like a sense of accomplishment, too. So yeah. when it plays, you're like, oh, hang on, i got to watch this. Yeah. You know, uh, I did this. i got to yeah. get my end cutscene credits or, right. and, and my music that I've right. got going on here. That's fun. So what is number four? My for number you? four, I just put at number four, like all of these, I'm with you. Like I can yeah. shift a lot of these around so easily because they're based on things. But I put number four at Civilization Four, uh, which is PC game. Okay. Uh, just because it has number four in the title. Interesting. And uh, that that game has the best opening cinematic of any of the Civilization games, which I have played all of them, and I adore all of the Civilization games. They're one of the greatest strategy games ever invented and uh, continue to get better every year or every with every iteration. Civ 4 has a song called Baba Yetu in it, which was uh, based on an African uh, shucks prayer, I think it was. I, I'm, I should have okay. looked more into it before I, do, I recorded this, but... It, uh, it it's 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 made up song you know it's it's a fictional language that that it's sung in okay. but uh, it it goes through the opening cinematic cinematic of uh, you know, I don't know if you do you know what civilization is and 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 are you familiar with it? I know about it. Yes, you, you pick a great civilization I, I, from history. You start out at six thousand BC and you and you progress it forward. Building, and, yeah. right? You, and Build so you it, you try to rule it. the world essentially or win somewhere. My another. brothers played something similar. There are a I lot of games. There was a lot of games back yes. then in the late nineties, mid. Still are no, it's a huge. Oh, still, still, it's, still today. But here's back the thing: there's a lot. There's, I can't remember. Mist. Mist was, was Mist, one? Mist is an action mystery game. Oh, never or mind. Sort of thing. Yeah. Never mind. That's not that wasn't it. I'm thinking of something different. But they yeah. had something like that. I don't know if it was Civilization, but they had something like that. Well, uh, Civilization has defined the genre because uh, you know anything like it is always referred to as Civ-like. Uh, it, gotcha. it is the standard, so basically, the standard that everything. That yeah. yeah. So Civilization Four 
the opening uh, has you start out with the, the caveman in the middle of nowhere you know with nothing and then at the end of the cinematic you're flying off to mars and what you know so you've created this grand civilization through the ages and you've ruled them well and or you take yeah. over the world or you know there's several different ways to beat the game yeah and different paths to victory but baba yetu got a lot of awards and it's been remastered and resung and uh, recreated by a lot of really talented people uh, just because it's adored. And so you, it has a big, majestic, grand, sweeping feeling like, holy crap, I can rule the world, and yes, I am king, and, uh, you know, uh, or I rule this place. Or It has it gives you a feeling of power and wonder at the same time because you can build the pyramids in your, and, and you know, if, if you focus a lot of <laughs> effort and resource, it's like a good board game. If you can focus a lot of effort and resources into building the world wonder, the, the pyramids of Giza. It's a big but, deal. But you can build them in your city instead, and they become the pyramids of X city that you have created. And But if you do that, if you push all your resources towards that pyramid and you can get a gigantic bonus from it but you have not neglected all these other aspects of your empire to, to build them go for so broke. what's the risk right yeah so if you're neighbors with montezuma of the aztecs you had better not be trying to build the pyramids because he's coming for you <laughs> and there's nothing you can do about it and what's great is that the original civilization had a bug in it where mahatma gandhi they had an aggression scale of one to a hundred or one to zero to 99 no it was right. one to 99 and it would flip over if you went past 99 like genghis khan or i think or or montezuma one of those guys had an aggression uh uh personality of 99 and montezuma or uh mahatma gandhi had a, a one uh, mm -hmm. so he was a pacifist right but it w there was a bug in the late game when you researched the united nations and you uh everybody got together and so aggression levels went down across the board for every civ that was in the game okay well mahatma was already at a one and so when united nations gets researched he goes down to not zero it flips to 99, 99. and so then he suddenly becomes the most aggressive person in the entire <laughs> game because i think even montezuma was like a 50 that's or hilarious. something but the that's they hilarious. just coded it as 99 so it, it's a joke that's a long running gag that uh, anytime that the UN has been developed that Mahatma is going to threaten you, he threatens, instantly threatens yeah. every single country with nuclear weapons. He's like, we will, if you don't give us what we're got, we're going to drop That's nukes great. on you. And it's fantastic. There's all That's kinds hilarious. of gags and memes that, from gamers who've played Civ in the years. So it's really ah, fun. But good. regardless, like, look, I don't think we can play any, any songs on, like this from YouTube, but we can link Probably some of them it. perhaps yeah. uh, in the, in the well, chat. People but, can go ahead and you can always YouTube just any of these. Look it up. Yeah. You yeah. can YouTube any of these and there's such a good one and and i can't go past this one without mentioning uh maluka is is a, is a great mexican artist that she sings a cover of of baba yetu that everybody okay. if you're going to listen to baba yetu do the version that maluka did a, okay. she did a partnership with a guy that i can't remember his name but i remember okay. hers and so right. m-a-l-u-k-a-h is gotcha. hers so right on. Uh, my, my number three is very cliche, but it's one I thought about and I love it. Do we know how much crossover we're going to have? Cause we've already been through two. I don't think we're having any. Okay. Any. We're going to say zero. I'm going to say one. Okay. You guys say one. Yeah. Zelda. Yeah. Okay. There's a crossover. Um, there it is. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, there yeah, it yeah, was. Yeah. Okay. You had it too. It's my honorable sure. mention actually. Oh, okay. So well, not quite, not, not quite a crossover. crossover. It's down here at the bottom. So Zelda, just, just that opening theme is just so beautiful. Mm -hmm. And that it had the opening, it, the it overland has, theme, everything about it. It has the, but just the opening thing. Dun, da, da, dun, da, da, dun. Yeah. It the feels like a quest. Exactly. It's exactly. exactly what Zelda is. It That's feels what like I was trying to say. Adventure. Civilization four, wait, what the game is, that opening cinematic. That's what it feels like yeah. to rule a civilization over 6,000 years. It, it encapsulates yeah. that. And Zelda, Zelda does Zelda that does too. That exactly. Too. Go yeah. on an adventure. But everyone knows Zelda. I don't have to explain that one, but that was, that, nah, it's very cliche in a way, but that's my number three. Yes, yeah, absolutely love it for sure. It is. It's very heroic. That is a good one. Yeah, uh, it is. It is. But I, I do like that one. What's yes. What's your number three? Though? Halo, the original Halo. Oh man! And I'm telling you, one. whenever that, or maybe even Halo Two, oh. but yeah. So you have a. That's what I was thinking of. The opening title, first of all, the 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 voice operatic opening. Uh, bit but the part that always got me in halo was the drum beat when stuff was about to get real when yeah. you're doo, 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 and it would get the really heavy drums going when you're jumping when you're driving that truck away from Gosh. maybe it was at the very end of the game when when everything's blowing up around you and you're driving the truck as fast as you can yeah, to get out as it's one. being destroyed 
and the Dang adrenaline it. surge I would get from the the music. Like I remember, I would play that game sometimes so often that I didn't need the sound any at all to tell me what was happening. Yeah. But I would always have the sound on for that final I, drive out of the thing as it was falling apart. I, yeah. Because you and I played a lot of Halo. That would that would probably be number three. Wow. Oh, There's my I first crossover I just, then. I just can't. Well, I mean, it's mm-hmm. late, so I don't know. But I mean, is this just that was. A really, uh, you you got goosebumps when you heard you, it. That is exactly why. And by the way, everyone had surround sound back then. <laughs> everyone was in their surround sound. So when it play, and you played it to the max because yeah. that thing was loud. I cranked but it we up. Absolutely loved it. And I can't tell you how many ha- Halo LAN parties. Oh man. I had fun at. I mean, you're. We've talked about this in the podcast before, but your Thanksgiving Eve mm-hmm. bash yep, yep, yep. was a great night too. I stayed up all night, went to bed, woke so up at much noon, fun. went to still going. You yeah, came, you it, left, came back, still going. It was it's it's awesome. It's awesome. That so music though really made that game yeah. so good. You're right. Like that, You're right. that, it's it's almost like Star Wars in a lot of ways. You can't it's have Star day. Wars without John Williams and, and Halo. I feel like you have to have that music to make that, that is, game great. That is a good so. pick. What a great pick. What's your um, number two? Number two is one I played for y'all uh, that day. Oh, oh uh, tell me it's Bible Adventures. Th- no. Okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I do like that one. I love that because it just makes me happy. But uh, Tecmo Bowl. Oh, I mean, I remember... I tried to make up words of that song. Bo Jackson you know? running circles around everybody. Oh man, it's way just too fast. How it started. I mean, you could just hear it. I was like, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That's just the intro. That's the title that's screen. The title music. screen and then the scrolling. Right. Super Tech Mobile was also great with music. As oh well. yeah, no, like, it, was it was great too. Incredible. But, but the first Tech Mobile for it me really made it the best. The yeah. best. I mean, that just hammered it in. So that was a, that was a that was a big one for me. I, I always enjoyed. I te- agree. I played me a lot of tech mobile. Techmo, tech mobile. That's what you had some Soul lyrics to it. Do you remember he any of the other three lyrics? times? Do you remember um, any of your lyrics that you had for it? Ta-da. Oh no no no! I got, uh, Here comes tech mobile down the street. No 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 no. <laughs> no, I don't remember what I say because. Techmo. Uh, no, sorry, they go. I can't hear I can't it now. Right. Oh man, I, I, it, we'll listen to it afterwards. Maybe I can get some that of the words. Great. It'll come to me when That's I hear funny. it. Maybe. That's really funny. But yeah, I tried to make my own lyrics for that. That's really great. That reminds me of a of a, the story about with when they were trying to create the Superman theme song. And yeah, and then classic. Dun, dun, dun. Like they, he really wanted something that said Superman, Superman, yeah. or whatever, and that's what exactly yeah. what he gave him. And oh, it's just so perfect. Similar with well, the, Indiana, the, the dun, Indiana Jones, right? Right. You're like, man, that's a great movie theme that's for a, sure. That's a, I mean. You come yeah. out, you play that music when Dick, you walk out of the room on your wedding that night. Was, <laughs> that was directed by Dick Donner, right? Uh, Superman? Richard was, Donner, yeah. yeah. I remember he said, that, he said that was what the music that he wanted was. Something that just said Superman like that. Man, and I remember that similarly, that. like Spielberg had this conversation with John Williams when they were trying to do the Indiana Jones theme song. And uh, John Williams or came to Spielberg yeah. and he says... Uh, that- what do you think about this one? He's dun 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 dun, yeah. and he says, "I like that." And he says, "Okay, what do you think about this one?" He says, "Dun dun 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 dun." dun. And he says, "Oh, I do them both. Put them together." Yeah. And that was how they came up with that and combined them. Uh, the, the thing is, there there is not a composer, modern day composer on this earth that can beat John Williams. The man <laughs> has too many classics. Too many classics. No, Even some uh, of his unknown ones, like Hook, is just oh, I know. beautiful, it's priceless, beautiful, beautiful. Stuff, right? I mean, you got a man who has all these big home run hits that everyone knows, but then all the other movies he made, they got great soundtracks too. Yeah, 
It's funny how I know so many music majors, I guess, people who are big music buffs who just loathe John Williams because they say his stuff all sounds the same, and it's, it's like, I don't care. Every, every, every composer has their own sound. Of course. Yeah, but that's how you can tell Mozart Danny Elfman from has Vivaldi all his own stuff, and Bach. Right? Oh, my gosh, You yes. can always tell that. So That's, that's a good point. That 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 is ignorance. Uh, that's probably a good point. Oh, yeah. Mozart's over or ego. He sounds the same and whatever. Right. Yeah, but you yeah, know that people had that same music. argument when they were everyone alive, has too. Their, like, James Horner had his right. own sound. Hans Zimmer. <laughs> has his own sound. Right. Danny Elfman. Danny Elfman you, can, right. you can see Danny Elfman Instantly. a million miles away. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, though, yeah, they borrow from certain things. My favorite one was, uh, who did, uh, I'm, I'm going to kick myself for this, who did uh, Saving Private Ryan? Was that John Wayne? I don't know. What, don't what like happened was, whoever did Predator did Saving Private Ryan, because in Predator, there's a, uh, there's a trumpet playing in one scene where that guy, one of the guys died, yeah. and he's kind of bearing... And it's the theme song to what became Saving Private Ryan. What? He just took that little ditty that he wrote From for Predator. Predator and then built it into its own little uh, thing. Alan Silvestri, that's who it is. Wow. Yeah. Cool. Really interesting. Who also, Alan that's Silvestri also did uh, Back to the Future. You know what I'm realizing is that uh, we are going to do ha uh, a top five podcast of movie music, it sounds like. because oh, we're, geez, we have even harder. We have You're veered killing me. You're killing me terribly smalls. already from, from our video game. You're killing me on that uh, one. Look, I, I love soundtracks. There it is. We're doing that All soon, right. ladies All and right. gentlemen. What's your number on the two? Docket. How did I? One, two, three, four, did you get five. To, well, maybe you already gave your two. Yeah, you did. Uh, I did? No, I didn't. Well, okay, go ahead and give your two. Oh, uh, where did I? Oh, I have six. That's why. I'm sorry. I oh, miscounted. Well, go ahead and catch up. So, two more. Okay, so it's fine. my get number three more. is uh, Skyrim, Elder Scrolls Part 5. Oh. And, and the Elder Scrolls uh, series in general, Elder Scrolls 3, 4, and 5 especially. And mm -hmm. I'm assuming that the forthcoming Elder Scrolls 6 will be just as majestic and epic as well. Have you be. ever played any of the Elder Scrolls games, no. which are all newer? No, I, I no. assumed that you would have retired from video gaming by this time. Yeah. Uh, I can't recreate it for you, but the opening title screen of um, uh, of Elder Scrolls Part 5 is one of the greatest, like, I'm ready for an adventure oh, really? uh, songs ever. Lots of halo-esque sort of shouting and, and male voices and, and shouting in unison doing stuff with the... Uh, when it, when stuff gets really going, but it, it just, I hope you listen back to this podcast and you fire it up on YouTube yourself and just listen to the opening credits of, of Elder Scrolls Part 5, um, okay. uh, Skyrim, and it's mm. just magnificent. Tell me if I'm wrong. Right on, right on, right there. okay. Yeah. And the next one? And uh, since Skyrim is so popular, I don't have to really go any farther with that. However, Maluka, again, I have to give credit to her mm -hmm. because w w Skyrim is an immersive RPG where you can go and do whatever you want. And that's the beauty of it is that you walk out and you have absolutely nothing, but you can go anywhere and do whatever. And the game allows you to do that. And it's great. You see that mountaintop over there? I can go climb right. that. It's great. One of the things that is intrinsic to the game is that you can go into a tavern in any of the major towns, and there's usually a bard in there, or you can meet a traveling bard who will play you a song for a few coins or something like that. And one of the, the songs in the game was the, the Dragonborn Comes, and Maluka re-recorded it in her own um, mm. beautiful uh, voice that she's got. She's nice. it's really great because she's she's Mexican and she's got a, a very thick uh, not a very thick she's got a good English. Uh, but she's got a, a thick Mexican accent or a distinct Mexican accent distinct, what I'm trying to say okay. distinct and uh, but she sings perfectly in uh, you would never know even that she was uh, had a Mexican descent unless you talked to her or heard her uh, speak and uh, she's just got such an incredible uh, haunting beautiful melodic voice and so anybody who's a fan of the Elder Scrolls series uh, is probably already a fan of hers but She's still recording stuff and has her own albums and everything else now, but it's just such an enchanting, like just a perfect pairing of of song and, and music and artist. And you know, sometimes you just hit that perfect mix, yeah. and she's absolutely perfect for that. So, awesome. so much so, and they fell in love with it that when they created the Elder Scrolls Online, which was the next game in the series, mm -hmm. they asked her to come and record for the actual game. Oh. So she's got some stuff in there, and she's oh, been yeah. Like that. So I thought that was oh, really right great. On. Uh, my number two, I guess, yes, is where I am, is, is because it's at, uh, I got a two in the name, is Mega Man 2. 
and this this is where the well, conversation we played, began. We played this music dur- yes. when we were discussing it, and and I, you started the first two seconds of it. And I was like, "This Mega Man." You too. knew what it was, and then the first villain I gave to you, yes, that you you had trouble placing at first. I can't remember who it was now. That is my favorite from Mega Man Two. That music, yes. Um, the Doctor Wily's Castle is what you're talking about, or no, the, no, no. Or, no. Oh, you're talking about it was one of his uh, Buzzsaw Man or some uh, Wind Man or Quick whatever. Man was my Quick first man. one. That was okay. the first one that I couldn't place. Was yeah, Quick okay. Man. Quick Man was one of my favorite. I, mm-hmm. I loved his. Music. I love. I loved Mega Man Two music. Uh, uh, that entire yeah. entire oh, game him. is just priceless from start to finish. There's this great video uh, from like eight years ago uh, that is a, a, a rock band playing all of those, mm-hmm. and they've got like a projector going in the background with somebody That's playing awesome. the game, and they they play out all of the songs yeah. as they're playing the game, and then live. It's fantastic, and. <laughs> Uh, but with Mega Man, I, I remember I had that Nintendo game, and uh, I sold it to my friend Caleb at you know as a kid, and it was like two bucks or two dollars and fifty cents or something like that, you know, some ridiculously low price. Yeah. And uh, I remembered feeling like oh, I shouldn't have done that. I should hang on to that game. You know, I didn't need the money that much, or I just bought a something crappy with my two dollars that he gave me for it. But what's funny is that I went after I moved back to the area, he gave it to me for my birthday like 35 years later or That's something hilarious. Yeah. and That's i still have hilarious. it I, I keep it it's in my hey. office right now the cartridge that i sold to him as kids right uh, he on. gave it back to me as a gift and so it was a really cool story with that and he always makes fun of that that i sold it to him so cheap and right on. we have a lot of fun right on right but on. he was the one that i stole or not stole but borrowed zelda from often <laughs> because he had the gold cartridge that i always rode my bike to his house to get ah so right. Mega Man 2 with all of that is just fantastic. That's a good one. That's mm-hmm. good. My brothers, if they were here, they put that on theirs. So. Dr. Wily's Castle, I think, got so good for me. Oh, I can't hear it right now. I can hear everything else. But that's, oh, well, so it was similar to like Halo is the fact that, wow. oh, I'm getting close to you now, sucker. I'm yeah. coming for you. Like, oh, and you can get charged up. Like there's the opening title credits where it gets going with the top of the building and it's like, and it gets, yeah, oh, and yeah. you're like, oh, here we go. We're going to get started. And now it's on. And then you chase this sucker down for eight levels and all these bosses. And then you finally get close to him. And you're like, oh, here we go. Bam. And here then we you, go. And then about halfway through it, you get just pumped. Oh, yeah. yeah. You've got the drum beat kicking in. Got and to. how the, did they do this with 8-bit sound effects? Like, just nothing. Had oh, nothing to work with. And everyone was unique. You know. Unbelievable. You, it, it defined the characters Unbelievable. of the game. Yeah. It really does. Yeah. Uh, my number one is the one I just thought of as the podcast started. No um, way. I was talking about I didn't play you, many. Something m- jumps to your number one? Oh, uh, yeah. That's how. That's because these, these, the, I could make five more and be totally different and agree with them. Um, because my number one uh, was I told you I don't play many new games, and I thought about one of the last games I ever played, and went, "Wait a minute, I bought that soundtrack." Um, uh, Batman: Arkham City. What um, the opening wow. music of that is just so great. It plays like I a movie. Don't know All those if Arkham I games that. That sounds play like, like a movie, but that second that, was... that Arkham City soundtrack just blew yeah. me. The, and I, I remember I bought the soundtrack on CD. That's back amazing. Then. I, I was like, this is amazing. And I, I love What was that studio? Arkham Rocksteady? City. Yeah, Rocksteady did a great oh, wow. job. Great job with it. I never played Arkham Knight because that was on the new system. Oh, yeah. But, uh, man, those games, I played through Arkham Asylum yeah. two or three times. Arkham Asylum. I played Asylum. through Arkham City, I mean, completely. I mean, from the ground and then yeah. beat all the side levels. Got the Riddler got twice. Got all the achievements and everything. Um, got all the you achievements. Yeah, that's cool. I'll never do that again, but it was <laughs> Arkham City. And then I played... Played Arkham Origins once, hmm. and because of that bad glitch they never fixed during Firefly oh, um, no. level, and so I never played oh. it again. But I would if I, you know, because I I did enjoy it. If someone has fixed it, you would play. Oh yeah. Okay. So if oh yeah, but it was patch. A, that was such a fun game. Oh, such a fun game. That was the first really, probably the first really good Batman game that ever got made. Uh, oh yeah, and uh, because you felt powerful, like really, you and, felt and like they a were smart because you're not you're, you're pushing the same buttons and it's, yeah. it's automatically giving you the combos. And that's right. what they said: make the fights easy and fun, but make them make you feel strong and like yeah. you just can't. I can handle these twenty guys that I'm up against right now, like no problem. You just learn your combos and Great you, fit, you make a mistake. A lot of games like they that was so genius, and people copy have copied that over and over and over yeah. and over again but but as music goes that that to me was just tops that's cool i can't think of what the movie music was like honestly because i love i, the I loved the first one especially the best that's cool yeah. i'm gonna have to i'm gonna have to youtube that one it, it, and listen it, to it feels again. like you're listening to a batman movie wow so good that's a good and they compliment. don't use the danny elfman theme either 
So really? it's just it's it's just great because it feels like Batman. Sort of it feels like you're inspired watching... by Danny Elfman. Uh, no, inspired by Batman. It's wow. great. It's great. That's cool. All right, what's number one for you? Final Final Fantasy. I uh, knew I should. You did. Yes. No. That. And uh, I, we've had this conversation before. We did. Specifically, Final Fantasy three yes. slash Final Fantasy six. It was three in the states when it came I out. Should have. It's part six altogether. It's it's referred to as six now. You should have yeah. known it. Yeah. Should uh, have. Just everything about it from the opening credits to the opera house scene which has been that what i was talking about with baba yetu earlier and how it's been re-recorded professionally so many Mm. times that opera house uh, then that opera cinematic is one of the greatest moments in all video game history because of the music um kefka who is the great bad guy that we've talked about before he is one of the great bad guys of all time because of the music. It's my, not just the story, and it's not just what happens, and it's not just the character. It's not just the game. It's that music that yeah. makes it so good. My buddy Bruce from Princeton Universe would agree. Yes. It's, That's his favorite. Final Fantasy uh, VI is... You cannot separate the music from that game that makes it great. That yeah. The 10 out of 10 perfect game, because partly mm-hmm. because of the music. That's a huge chunk yeah. of the score. That's how it so, goes. Easy enough. Um, I, I should mention that Mikey gave us his top five. He did give um, us his top did. five. Let's uh, do it some justice. Yeah, just I, we'll just go over it real quick because we're running out of time. Number here, five, but uh, number five was Who Framed Roger Rabbit. That's a good one. Yeah, I I don't I honestly remember it. Uh, number four was Pac Man, which you know kind of kind of classic, excellent, arcade, excellent yeah. soundtrack. Yeah. Um, number three, uh, Oregon Trail. Yeah, that was the best. I totally agree with that. You one. totally agree with that one? Absolutely. Okay, okay. Incredible. Uh, and number two was E. T. from Atari. Yeah, that drum beat when you hit the when it hits the down beat and gets going, mm-hmm. like right before you mm-hmm. find the power ups. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, you kept falling back into the Unbelievable. hole. Unbelievable. You fall in yeah. that hole. Yeah, you get the goosebumps every time. And, and then number one was Pong. Perfect. Which I don't recall having music, but you know what? No. And maybe maybe that That's some of the best that, music I've ever probably heard so, in my probably life. Probably so. Oh, just brilliant. That's Mikey, you're such inspired choices, man. Yeah, it was really uh, great. Oh, that's man, hats off to you. That was I'm some of the you, best yeah, choices. Well, it, All of mine feel fact, like crap. Now I have we have to go back and I rethink. We need to go back and now. redo mine. This is ridiculous. We do, we do. Um hey, you know what? Emphasis though? on the ridiculous. Exactly. Yeah. Thinking the same thing. <laughs> I'm sure we'll hear back from him on another Saturday. Morning. Samuel Flame. Hi. Hey.